their craft, and what do they look like they're doing? Skiing, snowboarding, doing all those other things that you get hurt in the cold doing, and I have absolutely no idea what to do. <laughs> so we're talking about winter sports. There's this big bunch of games going on with this big bunch of grown-up people that want to play games or having the Olympics. And they get all the fastest runners and all the fastest skiers and all the fanciest figure skaters and they get together and they compete. Try and find a book on that. So we're talking about winter fun that we have today, our skiing, our skating, and all that kind of stuff. Click on that. I think we'll be good to go. Let me get the lights. We're going to read about skating and skiing and we're going to have lots of fun. Grandma's Promise by Elaine Moore. I always like Christmas, but this year I like after Christmas too. I'm going to spend a week with Grandma at the airport. I jump and shout when I see Grandma. She hurries through the crowd to meet me. Kim, she explains, you grown. Not you, Grandma says. You always look the same. Grandma laughs and I laugh too. Then we climb into her truck and drive the bumpy road to Grandma's house. Once we're inside, I rush to touch everything I've touched before. I look to see if anything is new. My bed's different. It's piled high with quilts. I've never been to Grandma's in the winter before. At bedtime, Grandma tells me a story about a little girl named Kim. I feel cozy and warm under my quilts. Listening to Grandma's voice, I wish the story would never end. But the next morning, a bright light streams into my room. My window is a white peephole. I throw back the covers and I scramble to look out. Snow, I yelled. Grandma, it snowed. Then when Grandma comes upstairs, she has news too. Because of the storm, we have no electricity. But don't worry, she says. We've got the lantern for light and the wood stove for heat. We have everything we need. But it's cold up here, so come on down to the kitchen where it's warm. Downstairs, Grandma says, would you fetch me, fetch me a jar of our peaches? On Grandma's pantry shelves are rows of shimmering glass jars. I see strawberry jam, string beans, tomatoes, and the peaches that I helped Grandma pick last summer. Grandma drops, drops chunks of fruit into the oatmeal bubbling on the wood stove. Soon we sit down to breakfast. I hate oatmeal at home, I told Grandma, but yours tastes different. That's because I'm the Grandma, she says. After breakfast, Grandma tells me it'll be windy and bitter cold tonight, so we need plenty of wood for our stove. We pull on the boots and mittens and go outside. I'm taking great high steps through the snow when suddenly I let go of Grandma's hand and I fall backward, and Grandma falls beside me. We wave our arms and legs, shushing them through the snow to make two snow angels, a Grandma and a little girl. We brush each other off, then we carry wood and stack it in the kitchen. Oops. Later, after we've warmed our hands around hot mugs of cocoa, Grandma sets out peanut butter, cornmeal, and pine cones on the table. Is this lunch, I ask? Grandma laughs. Not for us. It's for our friends, the birds. But Grandma, I said, last summer you shooed the birds away. Well, that's because they were pecking our fruit, even though they had food of their own, Grandma answers. But now their food is all covered with snow, and they are cold and hungry. We mix peanut butter and cornmeal in a bowl, and then press the mixture into the pine cones. Grandma has saved field corn for the squirrels, and I will share an apple with the rabbits. As we hang up the pine cones for the birds, I wonder how we'll find the rabbits. And then Grandma points to tiny tracks in the snow. We follow the tracks to a small plum tree that we planted last summer. Grandma stops and sighs. Just as I suspected, the rabbits are nibbling my promises. Promises, I asked. Kneeling, Grandma shows me buds growing along the branches. Inside each is next year's leaf, she explains. For me, the buds are promise of summer when you will come again. Together we sprinkle apple peelings to lead the rabbits away from the tree. After dinner, Grandma opens her yellow pine cabinet and she pulls out a pair of ice skates. 
too small to be grandma's. Well, whose skates are these, I asked. They were your mother's when she was a little girl. And let's see if they fit you. Grandma slips a skate onto my foot. Why, Kim, they're exactly the right size. These were my mother's, I say? Yes, Grandma answers. She liked to skate on our pond. Now it's your turn to use them. I think about skating on the pond and my mother's skates as I listen to the fire rustle and pop in the wood stove. Soon, my sleepy eyes start to close. Time for bed, says Grandma. She's holding a stack of blankets. Tonight will be an adventure. We'll make a bedroll and sleep in front of the wood stove. Together, Grandma and I make a thick layer of blankets on the floor. We make the corners all neat and we tuck in three sides. I crawl in the bedroll first and then Grandma gets in beside me. Outside, the branches creak against the wind, but inside, I snuggle like a squirrel, safe and warm in Grandma's arms. In the morning, Grandma says it's too windy for skating, but not for a treasure hunt. We hunt treasures in Grandma's attic. I help Grandma move piles of stiff yellow papers off of a big brown trunk. The dust tickles my nose. Inside the trunk, I find clothes, sweaters, hats, and my mother's green party dress. We try everything on. Beside me, Grandma's smile seems to fill the mirror. Kim, you look just like your mother. But when I look, I only see me. But the next afternoon, we walk to the pond. I've never skated on a pond before. At first, I wobble over the bumpy ice, but then I reach a patch that is smoothed by the wind. Now I can glide fast and far, but I can always see Grandma. I like it when Grandma watches me. Later, I'll ask her, could my mother skate backwards when she was a little girl like me? On her way home, suddenly Grandma stops. Shh, she says, and I look where she's pointing. Santa's reindeer, I whisper. No, Kim, Grandma whispers back. Those are white-tailed deer. Walking slowly, we watch until their white tails disappear amongst the trees. I'm thinking of the white-tailed deer when Grandma squeezes my arm. Look, Kim, the electricity's on. Grandma's <coughs> windows are glowing with yellow light. Hooray, I shout even though I will kind of miss the adventure of sleeping in front of the wood stove. A few days later, my peephole is gone and the sun streams through my window. Outside, the snow is softer, and I find the rabbit's tracks, but they're much larger than before. Grandma, do you have a monster rabbit? I ask. Grandma smiles. No, Kim. The tracks get bigger when the snow melted. Why, just look at yours. They're big enough for next year, to be next year's prints. Oh no, I groan. Then my mother's skates won't fit. Grandma puts her arms around me. We will buy you new skates of your own. But for now, I think you should take your mother's skates home. They'll help you remember that no matter how big you grow, you can always come back to grandma's. Promise, Grandma, I asked. Promise, Grandma answers. So we're going to read Curious George Goes Sledding. And this book is edited by Margaret Ray and Alan J. Shalek. It's based on a film. How about that? It snowed last night, George, said the man in the yellow hat. Let's try our new sled. George and the man with the yellow hat went to the bottom of the hill. Look at all the kids on that hill. You can climb the hill, George, said the man, but don't get into trouble. At the top of the hill, Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez were watching the children playing in the snow. Lisa and Paul were making a snowman. Their little brother, Jimmy, was helping. George wanted to make a snowman, too. He started to roll a snowball. The snowball got bigger and bigger until it was so big that George couldn't see over it. Watch out, George, called Mr. Ramirez. You're getting close to the edge of the hill. Is George going to get in trouble? I bet he is. But, so, but George didn't pay attention. 
Suddenly, the snowball rolled over the edge. It rolled down the hill, turning faster and faster, gathering snow as it went. Watch out, someone cried. Here comes an avalanche. The snowball knocked over some skiers. A boy on a sled got covered with snow. That monkey up there did it, shouted someone. Let's catch him. George ran away as fast as he could. He jumped over a snow fence and he hid behind it. Now he was safe. He peeked out and saw little Jimmy. Jimmy was all alone trying to climb on a sled. The sled started to slide toward the edge of the hill. Uh-oh. Watch out, Jimmy shouted his mother. Get off that sled. Jimmy couldn't hear her. But George knew what to do. He ran toward the sled and jumped on it right behind Jimmy. George held on to the boy and steered the sled with his feet. They were heading straight toward a tree stump. But George steered the sled away from the stump. Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez came running down the hill. Jimmy, are you all right? cried Mrs. Ramirez. Jimmy just laughed. It had been so much fun. There's that monkey who knocked me down, shouted a boy. Leave him alone. He saved my Jimmy, said Mrs. Ramirez. Three cheers for George. Can we do three cheers? Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> then the man with the yellow hat rushed over. There you are, George, said the man. Let's go for a ride on the sled. And that's what they did. So this is called Champ on Ice. And a lot of little kids love to go ice skating. So maybe you can go to Raleigh and go do some ice skating before the spring gets here. And this book is by Sharon Peters. There goes Champ. Watch Champ go. Champ can skate on ice. He can do many things on ice. He can skate forward. He can skate backwards. Champ can jump on ice. Watch him jump through the hoop. He skates faster and faster. He jumps forward. Can he do it? You think he's going to make it? Watch. There he goes through the hoop. Champ can do many things on ice. He can skate on one leg or he can skate on two. Champ can dance on ice. He can dance with the hoop. He can dance forward and watch him dance backwards. Champ can twirl on the ice, and he can spin on the ice. Watch him spin and twirl. He can spin and twirl on two legs. I think Champ's getting a little dizzy there. Look, he's gotten cross-sided. Or on one, uh-oh, or on none. There goes Champ. Watch Champ go. He can do so many things on ice. This is um, cat on ice. So we just saw a bear on ice. Now we're going to see a cat on ice. <coughs> this winter will be fun for Cat. She has new skates. And so does Rat. The pond won't freeze. They watch and they wait. But spring comes, and it's too late. They didn't get to skate at all. Next year, their skates might be too small. Why wait that long, says Mr. Deer. The indoor rink has ice all year. The north side rink is not too far. Rat's mother drives them in her car. They see a poster on the wall, and the poster says, Children wanted must be small. Sign up today from 10 to 3. Be in the show. Get trained for free. 
Hooray, says Rat, let's do it now. We can't, said Cat. We don't know how. How do you know? We've never tried. Rat pulls Cat's arm. They go inside. Fox signs them up. It's not too late, he says. Don't worry, you'll be great. We'll teach you all you need to know. You can be snowballs in the show. Their snowball suits are round and white. They tie their laces nice and tight. The trainer gives them good advice. Cat slips, rat slides, they're on the ice. They learn to stand, to fall, to run. They bump, they roll, they all have fun. Every day they come and skate. Cat is ready, rat can't wait. The rink is filled with song and light. The stars glide by so smooth and fast. They leap and twirl and then at last, the little snowballs tumble in. Cat yells to Rat, look, I can spin. The spotlight turns to shine on Cat. She spins, she stops, she falls, curse splat. Oh no, thinks Cat, I wrecked the show. But then the crowd yells, go Cat, go. They all love Cat, she made them laugh. Now they want her autograph. Okay, we're going to do one more story, and then we're going to do a cool craft. And this is called The 14 Forest Mice and the Winter Sledding Day. Outside in an old hollow tree, the wind whistled and roared. Nothing moved in the frozen forest but the whirling snowflakes. Deep inside the tree, the wood mouse family was warmed by the fire in the stove. Blizzards came every winter, and even the youngest mice knew how to keep busy until the snow stopped falling. In one corner, Grandpa, Walnut, and Petunia sawed and glued and whispered quietly. They were making a wonderful surprise. At the table, Pop and some of the others had their own secrets. In the busy kitchen, there were no secrets. Grandma was making jelly rolls and everyone knew it. While Mama tended the fire, Iris and Cashew helped with the sticky fruit. The jelly rolls rose delicious, high and light. One batch was ready for the oven. I can't wait till they're done, Peanut said, deserting his truck in his excitement. In the corner, the woodworker's surprise was shaping up under Grandpa's watchful eye. Sleds for everyone? Oh, when would the snow stop falling? At the big table, Papa and the others were nearly done coloring and snipping and cutting and pasting. Their surprise was almost ready. A game to help pass the time till the snow stopped. Where is that lost yellow piece, wondered Petunia, peering under the table. The kitchen door opened on a bounty of sweet rolls. Cashew balanced on a batch on his head. What a delicious delight for an indoor day. Ooh, and mmm-mm was all anyone could say. Two sweet rolls for each was hardly enough. How did Peanut get three? Almond asked. Pecan tossed the dice and the game began. As the blizzard raged outside, the wood mice played gaily, cheering each other on. Despite the noise, Peanut's head began to nod. The game went on as a blizzard wore down. The players groaned and cheers as first one team was the ahead and then the other. Peanut napped in his papa's arms while they waited out the storm. Then, the sun's out, cried Grandma. The snow has stopped. The sky was clear and bright when the wood mice, wood mice dug out. Follow me, yelled Chestnut as he led the happy race through the deep snow to the sled hill. At last, the top of the sled run. The cold, fresh air took their breath away as the wood mice sped down the hill. For some, the path took a sudden turn. Thump! The wood mice found many ways to stop a runaway sled. More than one mouse got a nose full of snow. 
Papa and Iris let out a sigh of relief, just glad to have arrived upright at the bottom of the run. In the last bit of light, the Wood Mouse family built a snow mouse. Good night, they called from their cozy little home. Once again, the snow was falling. Good night. Hey, Daddy. Look at there, you're on TV.